By leveraging industry-leading simulation tools, Eric was able to easily reuse his CAD model, simplify the geometry, set up real-world loading conditions and materials, mesh the model with optimal mesh types, and produce his results to understand how his ideas would perform without making physical prototypes. Issues and changes never come up in design, right? Well, if we didn't run into these issues and changes, designs would never change or improve. Let's check in with the team and see what happens when Sam identifies a possible interference issue and how Pete manages, reviews, and assigns this issue to be resolved. From the issue management tab located on Sam's dashboard, he has access to the entire CAD assembly. This is where he will file the interference issue by using an intuitive process. He adds a title and description, then Sam uses the resolution field to input his recommended solution. The next step is for Sam to attach the issue directly to the affected components. This assembly has a lot of components, but the selection tool makes it easy to identify the assembly, subassembly, or in this case, the single part to attach the issue against. The board's current revision and top level assembly are gathered and attached, and then tracked with the active issue. Since the board is currently owned by Dan, he is automatically attached to the reported issue. Sam will add Pete as well to make sure the appropriate actions are taken. Since no additional attachments are required, the issue is started and a flag is applied to the affected component. Within the same issue management tab, Sam navigates to the file issued to include a 3D markup to add a visual reference to the problem. A new markup is created and the assembly is loaded. From here, Sam begins to create individual slides to illustrate where the interference is likely to occur. Multiple tools are available for creating these types of markups. And with the pen option, this makes for quick work. A few lines to indicate the area of interference and an additional callout added for clarity. Sam saves this as a new slide in the 3D markup. The markup is complete and with several slides captured, Sam has clearly communicated the issue for Pete and Dan. Final step is to close it to attach the issue for easy reference. Creating issue is quick and easy. Keeping all this information in a digital format maintains clarity and keeps everyone informed of what's going on. It's Pete's turn to review and create any necessary change actions and keep things moving forward. From Pete's dashboard, enabling the issue flags gives a color-coded reference of each issue, their location, and their current status. Here we see the orange flag, which indicates Sam's recently submitted issue. Pete can maximize the issue details window on the dashboard to better look into the problem. Pete sees this as a major concern and doesn't waste any time issuing a change action against the board to resolve the interference. Creating a new change action from the issue automatically fills in the title and description fields. He then sets a severity level and a due date and closes to attach this change action to the issue. And then the final steps of pushing it to in work and update the priority to urgent to set things in motion. Now that the issue has been reviewed and the change action has been filed, it's Dan's turn to take over. Dan navigates over to a view of all the issues that he has been attached to. He can also see the assigned change action. From the affected parts list, he can right click and open the part in SOLIDWORKS. Before Dan starts modifying the board design, he will need to change the maturity. It's currently frozen for review, so it needs to be moved back to an in work state. Then he creates a new revision to maintain a, an account of the current design. Last step is to reserve it and begin his work. Dan interrogates the assembly by moving the articulating arm into the storage position. He can clearly see the interference. 
A live section view shows exactly what type of profile would be needed to create a proper clearance in the board. Dan creates a solid extrusion from the sketched profile. And adds some fillets using the convenient selection helper again. This shape is used to indent the already existing geometry, allowing Dan to preserve the board thickness while creating the clearance necessary for the articulating arm. All downstream features are preserved so Dan doesn't have to recreate them, saving a ton of time. Dan checks the fit one more time and things are looking great. He'll submit his changes to the 3D Experience platform and adds an informative comment for anyone interrogating the data. Checking the box in the dialog also releases the reservation, all in one step. Lastly, Dan changes the maturity of the board to, from in-work to release. This changes the revision from A1 to B1. Through a simple issue raised by Sam on the shop floor, Pete was able to quickly respond with a change action. From Dan's dashboard, reviewing the issue and requirements was clearly communicated. Making the required changes in 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS was quick and easy.